Okay, so in this lesson, we're gonna take a look at how to solve questions regarding forces on an inclined plane. What does that mean? <laughs> well, it means that instead of having flat ground, the surface is going to be tilted. And we're gonna look at all the forces that could apply here, which can be kind of intimidating for students and leaving students kind of feeling themselves a bit like an inclined plane, kind of like they're, um, What's the word? What would you be if you were attached to another object by an inclined plane wrapped helically around an axis? Screwed. <laughs> but fortunately, with a little change in perspective, I'm going to show you a trick to make these inclined plane questions much easier. So let's get into solving inclined plane questions. Okay, so let's start off with our mass on the inclined plane and look at the forces that are going to be at play. One that's always going to be there is the force of gravity. Can't get rid of gravity, it's going to be pulling directly down. What other forces can be going on? Well, there is a surface here and we're going to have a normal force. But the normal force looks different. It's pushing up at an angle because the normal force we said was the force from the surface. In this case, the surface is tilted and so the force from the surface is going to be perpendicular to the surface as it was before. But now that's not going to be straight up, it's going to be at an angle. And at this point, I'm going to remind you that whenever we're dealing with angled vectors, we want to break them into their components of horizontal and vertical components. So that's what makes this a bit trickier. We got gravity going down, but we're looking at the component at an angle. We're going to need to break that into its parts. What's going to make it a little bit worse is we can have another force. Maybe we're trying to push this mass up the ramp, but to push it up the ramp, that also is at an angle, force applied up the ramp. So we got two vectors that are at angle. That's gonna be a lot of work to break them into their components. What makes it even worse, there could be a third one, friction. Maybe it's trying to resist us pushing that up the ramp and we have some friction in this case. It's also at an angle because the whole thing's on an angle. So this leaves you with pretty, quite a mess, just a mess of a problem here where we have three vectors that we have to break up into components. However, I think we can make this three times easier. How we're going to make this three times easier is we're simply just going to tilt our head a little bit. If you tilt your head and you look at this, I'm going to actually tilt the screen for you here. It's going to start to look like this if we slide things around. That looks a lot easier because now we have most of our vectors or most of our arrows in the vertical and the horizontal plane. The only one that's off is gravity, which is a little bit of an angle. We'll have to break that one into components. But now instead of doing three, we only got to break up one which is much easier just by shifting our perspective a little bit. Now this isn't X and Y, this isn't vertical and horizontal, but it's either perpendicular to the plane or parallel to the plane. So we're gonna break gravity with a, with a triangle like this into its perpendicular and parallel components. So these aren't any new forces, but this one right here has perpendicular lines, means the perpendicular component of gravity, the part pushing it down onto the surface. Okay, and then this parallel one, it's gonna end up being the most important one here, the one that is pulling it down parallel to the plane. So basically it just pulls it down the slope. Okay, so we're gonna to have to break that into components, but to do that, we're gonna need an angle. So let's look at how we can get an angle from the slope to break this into its components. Okay, so I don't think you'd ever have to prove this on a question, but it shows how we're gonna use the angle of the ramp to determine the components. So first I'm just gonna look at this angle here and I'm gonna call that angle A and I'm gonna call this angle down here 90 degrees because gravity's going straight down, this part is flat, this is 90 degrees. Okay, lastly I'm looking at this triangle down here, I'm gonna look at the far angle and call that angle B. Okay, so we just put in some labels. Let's kind of consider what we know about triangles. We know all that A, B, and uh, this 90 degree angle have to add up to 180 degrees. All interior angles add up to 180 for a triangle. Okay, so if this is all 180 and I don't consider the 90, there'd be 90 degrees left over for A and B. So I can say from this that A and B are gonna add up together to be 90 degrees. Hopefully that's making sense. Let's use that information now to help break FG into components. I'm gonna draw a perpendicular line to the plane, which means that it's 90 degrees to the ramp. Okay, so there's a 90 degree angle here. And most importantly, let's shift to red where you can see this a bit better. There's 90 degrees right here. 
okay, 90 degrees between this perpendicular line and the slope of the ramp. Okay, we can see that that 90 degrees is made up mostly by A, but there's also a little bit left over here. Okay, why this is important is we can go back to what we saw here that A plus B gives us 90 degrees. And we're saying A plus something, whatever's missing here, gives us 90 degrees. Well, this has to be B. A and B are going to add up to 90 degrees. So overall, what we're trying to say is that this B over here is the same angle that we have over here. Why is it important to have that angle? Because that's what's going to allow us to break up FG into its components. So I'm going to get rid of some stuff here, and I'm going to darken everything else and just kind of focus on this angle B with FG. And now I'm going to draw my triangle, breaking this up into its F perpendicular and F parallel components. So once again, this F perpendicular, how much gravity is pushing it onto the ramp, and F parallel, how much it's pulling it down. To find those components, this is a 90 degree triangle, right? because the, it's perpendicular to the ramp, and this line is parallel to the ramp, the one down here. So I can just use that angle B, the same slope or the same angle of the ramp I can use to find those components. And that's going to be the first step that we do for basically any inclined plane questions to figure out the parallel and perpendicular components. Okay, so now let's look at some questions that you get for first identifying what other forces could be involved. Well, first, we're going to have FG, just as we said before, and FN. And at this point, this would be the most simple example where there's no friction, no one's pushing it up or down, but we just have these two forces going on. Maybe the question asks, if you set a mass on a frictionless surface, how fast is it going to accelerate down? Okay, before we do anything else, we should break it into components. So I draw my triangle, break into F parallel and F perpendicular. Okay, now when it's asking for acceleration, similar to before, we're going to keep our X and Y separate, but now we're keeping our parallel and perpendicular separate. The nice part about these is our kind of our, our new Y, or this direction, our perpendicular to the surface, there's never going to be any acceleration because it's not going to lift off of the ramp. It's not going to sink into the ramp. Those two forces are always going to be equal. Fn and F perpendicular are going to be the same. It's going to be supported and it's going to stay on the ramp. So it's never asking about acceleration there. It's not going to be moving in that direction. The direction it's going to move in is in the parallel component. It's either going to slide down or maybe later on with more complex questions, we'll push it up. Okay, but when we're doing our equation, we're always going to be look at what's happening in the parallel direction. And right now, when we look at the diagram, it's kind of hard to see what's acting in the parallel direction, but it is force parallel down there. And it's probably one of the hardest parts to incline plane questions. Students often miss that force because usually we're looking, I'll grab the pen, we look right here and we're looking for what forces there are pulling it down or pushing it up. And we forget to look down here and say, right, this component of gravity is what's pulling it down in that direction. And in this scenario, where we only have FG and FN, that's the only thing pulling it down is this F parallel. So if we wanted to solve for how fast it's going to accelerate, we would just write F net in the parallel direction is just equal to F parallel. There's nothing else going on in this plane. The only thing going on there is F parallel. We'd be able to solve for the net force and the acceleration. When questions get harder, we're just going to add more forces to that parallel plane. So maybe there's friction. It's sliding down, but friction is resisting that motion. Friction's act, act, acting up in this direction. So how do we change how to solve the problem? We're just going to add friction there as well. And it's looking for what's going on in the parallel plane. We add one more force to it. The last level of difficulty that I would see is if you add one more force, maybe we're trying to pull it down here. So we're pulling it down, gravity's pulling it down, friction's going up, I would have to add one more force. So I call that the three levels of difficulty. Do you have just F parallel? Do you have F parallel and FF? Or do you have all three of these forces and you have to deal with three? So let's go through with some numbers solving level one, two, and three of difficulty. Okay, starting with the first one, a 3.2 kilogram mass is placed on a 25 degree frictionless slope. Where are you gonna begin? You're gonna begin by drawing the forces. So we have gravity, and we're going to break into components. First step, break into components. You're going to need these components at some point later. So sometimes I even give students a half mark just for putting those so they know we're never going to use the value for FG. That's the one that's kind of like at an angle. We're only going to use these components. So first thing to do is, is write down that we're going to break into those components. 
And let's find those numbers off to start. So FG, I didn't put the equation here, but it's mass times gravity. So our 3.2 kilograms times 9.81, we get 31.39. Again, I'm never gonna use that number in my equations because I'm gonna use my components. I need to break into these parts. Okay, so I'm gonna take 31.39 and use the 25 here. And I'm gonna solve for my opposite, my F parallel. So I'm gonna go 31.39 times sine 25 and I get 13.27. You could solve for this component as well. It's a good idea too. Um, we're not gonna need that one in this example, so I'm gonna go skip over it, but you can solve for that component as well. All right, uh, now that we have that, let's consider that we have normal force. Again, that's equal to the perpendicular force. I don't need it so far though, so I'm just gonna leave that there. Okay, what's my question? Um, actually, doesn't ask a question. What I meant for it to say there is what is the acceleration of the mass down the ramp? That's what we're trying to solve for. So I'm trying to solve for the acceleration in the parallel direction. Let's look at the forces. Again, I look here and I might think, oh, there's nothing. There's nothing pulling it down because you didn't see it. But down here, there's force parallel pulling it down the ramp, and that's the only thing pulling it down. Okay. So I look and say F net is equal to F parallel. No friction, no applied force. How am I going to solve for acceleration? Well, I'll say MA is equal to that 13.27. All I got to do to get A by itself is let's divide by the mass. So swing it over there. It told me in the question 3.2 kilograms, and I get an acceleration that would round to 4.1 meters per second squared. Okay, not too bad. Let's move to level two. Let's get it a little bit trickier here. Same 3.2 kilogram mass, 25 degrees, same slope, but now we're gonna have a coefficient of friction of 0 0.35. So we're throwing in another force, getting a little bit trickier here. Let's start just like we didn't know anything off the start, same way. Gravity's going down, break it into its components, and solve for those components. So 31.39 is gravity, times sine 25, and that 13.27, just like we did as before. One of the forces are going on, we have the normal force, and now we're gonna have force of friction. Okay, this one, I didn't type it up at the top, but the question's meant to be, what's the acceleration down the ramp? Okay, so I'm looking at the acceleration in a parallel direction, and you write all the forces that are going on in the parallel direction, because it's gonna slide in that way. Okay, so F net is equal to F parallel now plus force of friction. Okay, still trying to solve for the acceleration over here. So what do I know? I know the value 13.27 for F parallel. I know MA for F net, but I don't know the force of friction. In a previous video, we looked at when you're calculating the force of friction, it's the normal force times the coefficient. So let's throw all that in. MA 13.27 normal force times coefficient of friction. Okay, so another step here to solve for this force of friction, I need to know this normal force. And this kind of looks a little bit like I don't have a way to solve for that until we remember that it's not jumping off of the ramp or sinking into it. So F perpendicular has to be the same as the normal force. Those two are equal to each other. So I just got to figure out this F perpendicular. I should solve for that number and it's the same as my Fn. So to do that looking, I know my 25 degrees, I'm looking for the adjacent side, so I'm gonna use cosine. So let's put our force of gravity, 31.39 times cos 25, and I get 28.45 for my perpendicular force. So that's the part of gravity pushing it onto the surface. The normal force will match that so it doesn't sink or shoot off. So let's plug that in here with the 28.45, and now times the coefficient of friction, that was given to me in the question, 0.35. Okay, that becomes 9.96. You'll notice that I made this negative because I know it's going the opposite direction of F parallel. F parallel is pulling it down the ramp. Friction is resisting that going the opposite direction. So I made a negative here. Okay, I'm gonna take the product of those two, divide by the mass, which is again the 3.2, and we should get a nice number that rounds to 1.0 meters per second squared. So that friction slowed down its acceleration. It's gonna accelerate at one meters per second squared. Okay, so now going to the most difficult level three where we have gravity and its components as we always do, some friction and some applied force as well. So this one says a 3.2 kilogram mass, same mass, on a 25 degree slope, same slope, coefficient of friction of 0 0.35, same as before. But now if it accelerates at 2.1 meters per second, what is the applied force? And I meant to put here uh, up the ramp. If it's gonna accelerate up the ramp at 2.1 meters per second, what force do we have to apply to get it to go up in that direction? Okay, so I put the things that we knew from before here. We knew gravity and we knew the components. 
because those things haven't changed. We've had the same example for that. Now we're going to have a force applied up the ramp as it's going to accelerate upwards. We must be pushing upwards. And when it goes up in that direction, friction is going to resist its motion. So friction is going to be going in the opposite direction now. So friction is always going to resist movement. So it's going now down the ramp. So before I even put any numbers, I should note that friction is going down, parallel is going down, force applied is going up. So let's assign some numbers here. I'm going to call going up positive and going down negative. You can flip that if you want. You just have to note that they're going in opposite directions, so make them opposite signs. I'm going to choose down to be negative. Okay, so here's our formula. This is the third level. It's got the hardest, um, the hardest one because we've got three things, parallel, friction, and applied force. Okay, this one we're trying to solve here. So my force of friction I solved for in the previous example. That was the 9.9 .9 something. We'll see in a minute. Force parallel I have, and F net is going to be solved with MA. 9.96, that's what it was. So our mass is accelerating at 2.1, positive because it said it's going up. All right, I at least mean to type that it was going up there. I kept it positive. It's going up the ramp. Okay, we have down here for negative from where gravity is pulling it parallel. And then I have negative for friction. So all I really got to do now, once I multiply these, I'm going to move over the 13 and the 9.9. .9. I'm going to add them on this side, add those numbers because they're negative. I should get my applied force that's required. There's a nice rounded number of 30 newtons. So hopefully that shows you as we kind of build with the same scenario to more and more difficult situations that we're just adding another force the whole time across. If you jumped into this question with no previous numbers, yeah, it would take some time to solve, but hopefully that shows you that it's just adding one more force each time to F net formula. And they're really not that bad since you're only breaking FG into its components and that was your first step. You should do that as soon as you see any inclined plane question. But that's all we got for today's lesson. I hope that helped you with inclined plane problems. Thank you so much for watching. And I will see you in the next lesson.